So today's going to be a quick episode because I wanted to share a thought with you that I was sharing with clients recently as we were going through tax planning for 2024. And a lot of folks have come to me and asked questions around tax entity structure. And one of the biggest topics that comes up is whether or not we want to have corporations, LLCs, or sole proprietorships, which ones are best given your tax situation. And one of the things that keeps coming up is the C corporation. And I've noticed that a lot of people are looking over this C corporation because they're hearing so much about the S corporation and why that is better. So I'm going to, number one, I'm going to tell you the difference between these two things, but also I don't want you to knock the C corporation and overlook it because there's a ton that you can do with this if it's part of your tax strategy. So if you learn something today about these corporations, bring this to your tax advisor and just ask the questions. Just ask, hey, I heard a little bit more about the C corporation as an entity structure. Would that ever make sense for me? Or in what situation would that make sense to incorporate into my overall tax structure ecosystem? So let's dive in with the differences, the core differences, so you understand how this can be advantageous to you. So a C corporation is a traditional corporation the way it's normally defined. And a C corporation, the way it's handled is that you have shareholders that own the corporation. Uh, now, a corporation would be like the INC Incorporated, you know, and a C corporation is typically formed, again, at a state level. It's not an LLC. And you have, again, shareholders, not members, not partners. And the way it is taxed is that when you earn a profit from your C corporation, that profit is taxed at a flat rate of currently 21%. I say currently because tax laws can change. So as of this recording in 2024 in May, <laughs> it is 21%. Now, it, depending on what your tax rates are, you might be hearing 21% and go, hey, Shan, wait, that sounds good. I like that. I like 21% because I think I'm used to paying like 24% for my taxes. Yes, and I'll get to that. So 21% flat rate for your corporation's profit, okay? Here's the downside. This is where people, people will knock the C corporation for this part of it. That is if you leave the money in the business. So if you make $100,000 in profit in 2024, the corporation, and again, I'm, and I'm generalizing this math, by the way. This is not guaranteed, but this is just an idea of what you can expect from a federal tax perspective. So you make 100 grand in profit. You're going to pay 21,000 in federal taxes for the corporate tax, okay? 21,000. And the corporation pays that tax. Then what's going to happen is if you want to take some of that profit out of the business, here's the kicker. You want to take then another like 10,000 of that out. So you made 21,000, or excuse me, you made 100,000 in profit and you pay uh, 21,000 in taxes. Now you also are going to want to take out money during the course of the year. Let's say you want to take 10 grand out of the business. You take 10 grand out of the business and here's the thing. That 10 grand now is also subject to your income tax at your personal level. So wait a second, Shan. Are you telling me that that same money that was part of that profit and had tax applied to it, if I take more of that money out, I'm taxed again at my personal rate? Yes. And that's why people don't like the C corporation because of this thing called double taxation. If you make the profit at the corporate level and then you take the money out, you're triggering two taxable events, the profit and the withdrawal, AKA a dividend. And you're, tr you're taxed on that like dividend income. Okay. So here's the tricky thing about that. You can pay yourself a salary, but again, that's W2 income. So it's still income to you one way or another. You can avoid the double taxation by paying yourself the salary, but then you're paying payroll taxes on top of that. So it's important to understand that when would you want a C corporation in your ecosystem? Shannon, this sounds terrible. I can never take the money out. What? Well, here's the thing. Depending on your strategy, you can have a C corporation that earns the profit and have that flat taxed at 21% or yeah, 21%. Then I know some business owners who also, they have the C corporation, and this also enables you to take on investors a lot more easily, okay, at the central operating business. Let's just say that this is a, uh, we'll call it a marketing agency, for example. If you're running a marketing agency and you've got this the C corporation at the helm that's doing all of the 
operations and making all the profit, that's great. Then on top of that, maybe you also have a management company or a consulting company where you or your spouse runs it from a service provider standpoint and the C corporation hires that company. Now the C corporation has hired, let's just say like, you know, my Weinstein LLC to come in and help manage or consult with the company. Well, depending, and again, this has to be fair fees, has to have a clear contract, all of that, and be clearly a contract arrangement that's transactional. But let's just say you've set that line up and now I can get paid. And let's just say I'm a shareholder also in the corporation. I can get paid via this contract for the services that I provide. And then it's a little bit different. Now you can optimize that entity where you sit with the management company. You can optimize all of this, but I'm just sharing with you that you can basically design, if you need to, the ecosystem around whether or not you need to be taking investors and if you want to in the future. So a C corporation is great for that. But also if you want to have that flat tax at the corporate level and you're not planning on taking any dividends out, it's also a great idea. And if you are going to need money from these all these transactions, then you can pay yourself a salary as a C Corp shareholder, or you can also basically use other companies to help you transact and help you make the money that you need to by providing services. Now, there are some nuances to this as well. You got to make sure this is all totally legit, but there are ways that you can make this work for you. So, so basically, when you have a C corporation, it can be advantageous because an S corporation is purely passed through and with an S corporation, you're taxed at your individual tax rate on all the profits. So if you're the sole owner, I'm just assuming you're the sole owner. So if you have an S corporation, and you make $100,000 profit, your tax, and let's say I'm at an effective rate of 24%, then I would be paying $24,000 in taxes on my profit, as opposed to if I had a C corporation, it would be 21000 Again, assuming I had no dividends from that. So you have to remember that there are different entity structures that can serve different purposes, but also there are different tax treatments and depending on what your actual behavior is, it should dictate what entity that you want to have. And in my example, right, I say don't knock a C corporation until you try it, but a C corporation may not make sense for you. For example, if you if your effective tax rate is less than 21% and you're only paying effectively say 12% in taxes then and you have no reason to take on investors and really no reason to have the compliance upkeep of a corporation, then it may not make sense for you. But it's important to understand all of these different factors and just open yourself and open your mind up to the fact that hey, it's not just LLC S corporation. There is this other entity out there and if you have an ecosystem of different businesses that interact with one another, this could be a good one to add into the mix as well.